we can say the aspects that are there with the minting of coins etc so we can uh, consider them as a sub part of sculpt sculpture itself good evening students welcome back to pluto science right today is our 75th day right uh, with this topic uh, we will be completing the history part itself including the art and culture part strictly speaking uh, we can i mean we should have discussed it uh, this in the beginning of the uh, lecture itself but uh, either we can place the epigraphy in the <coughs> uh, i mean especially numis numismatics we can also consider them as art and architecture because the minting of coins is a uh, we can say the aspects that are there with the minting of coins etc so we can uh, consider them as a sub part of sculpt sculpture itself sculpture and metallurgy etc etc so if we are considering them as an evidence so they have to be considered uh, they have to be studied under the sources of history only Mm, however uh, i too had some confusion that whether to include them under the proper history topics or here so somehow i managed to uh, i'm finally i managed to put uh, uh, them in uh, i mean some certain part so this is our uh, so uh, all in all this is the lord last subject uh, in the art and culture part and also in the entire uh, uh, history part So and with this we will be successfully completing the seventy-five topics. So in in our uh, with respect to prelims lectures or prelims challenge, right? So uh, in this lecture I am going to uh, cover both the epigraphy. Epigraphy is uh, known as I mean epigraphy. It is the study of study of inscriptions. Study of inscriptions. and the numismatics is it is the study of coins numismatics uh, is study of coins so further you know very well the uh, inscriptions they can be divided into two categories one is dana dana shasnas or dana inscriptions and the second category is prashasti prashasti dana sar majorly they are inscriptions written on the copper plates copper plates so here uh, the uh, earlier the donations are used to be made to the brahmins and other we can say employees of the court uh, so those records that particular uh, i uh, the king king used to issue these dana shasnas that i i am donating this village village to this particular brahmin so the, those villages are you know very well they are used to be known as agraharas also so the dana shasnas have worked or served that purpose so basically they are in they are written on the copper plates so that they can act as a permanent record right so whenever a person questions and uh, comes and questions the authority of the brahman he can show this record that that particular village has been granted by uh, granted to me by particular king etc <coughs> so those are dana shasnas uh, another category is this is the most important category those are prashastis so these are generally written on the rocks right so a poet court poet used to write or compose the shasana and the sculptor he, he used to sculpt uh, sculpt that uh, we can say composition uh, on the rock so something it is majorly to praise <coughs> praise the achievements of the king uh, the shasanas have been issued dana shasanas the to praise the king's achievements and to uh, uh, mention his titles so for those kind of uh, purposes the prashasti is have been used so the very name is com coming from prashasti means to appreciate so uh, through the through those inscriptions praise uh, in those uh, inscriptions praises for for the kings are there like his conquests his achievements 
his titles etc etc his coronations so those kind of things are mentioned uh, because of that reason it is known as prashasti majorly you will find prashastis in the uh, rocks on the rocks uh, broadly there are other category of edicts or inscriptions also those are ashokan inscriptions ashu- issued by or uh, ashoka or we can say the edicts or inscriptions during the ashokan time inscriptions during the ashokan time but those inscriptions they do not fit into these two categories they are in fact a special type of inscriptions because of that they are known as edicts and further edicts are uh, divided into major and minor edicts we have seen that when we were discussing the mauryan empire so it is not uh, something related to dana also it is not the matter that is there uh, is there on those edicts it is not something related to prashasti also these are majorly instructions or guidelines to people are there in those shasanas they are kind of code of conduct for the people expectations from the people so those kind of uh, i mean the content right, content on those inscriptions is that because of that reason they are known as edicts also so entire information major rock edicts minor rock edicts and the content of those edicts we have everything we have seen we have seen the places associated with those uh, edicts also right so we are not going into the that discussion majorly we will see these uh, inscriptions only especially we will see the prashasti so majorly we were, we are going to see the prashasti apart from that you know coins coins are there from uh, for a very long time since the mauryan time you can uh, see the coins at that time we will see the punch marked coins punch marked coins so one symbol uh, used to be punched on that coins right uh, they were a crude form of coins not that much technology involved right <clears throat> only uh, made for most of the coins there used to be only one side marking is used to be there on only on the one side so as the time passed by complexity in the coins has also increased we will so uh, we will see those aspects so during the kushans time kushans were the first rulers to issue the uh, gold coins before that only silver and copper coins were in vogue so this is brief introduction so uh, now we will see the uh, actual discussion about the coins so epigraphy it is the study of inscriptions right so the major advantages of epigraphy is discovering the past so they will act as a source uh, for our to study and understand the history uh, so it is also a window to different facets of life so life issues also we will come to know about the information that is there on the inscriptions if you see particular utility of the shasanas or inscriptions we can understand the chronology of the kingdoms wherever uh, there is problem or what is there in the written in the books if there is any confusion we can corroborate them with the inscriptions and we can come to a proper chronology political history of the kings and the kingdoms we will come to know social history of the people will also be known because not only the political issue issues will be there but the social aspects will also be there several times social aspects have also been mentioned in the inscription best example is i want to hear uh, i want to give an example here the inscription of urayur urayur right so this inscri- inscription issued by cholas greater cholas it will give many aspects related to village administration so there through this uh, inscription you will come to know about the local self government practices of the cholas right <coughs> like that many other inscriptions are there so you will come to know, know about the irrigation system that is practiced by cholas so that uh, another inscription is there from that information you will come to know about the irrigation facilities canals that have been created by cholas so this urayur or uttarmerur inscription i am sorry it is not urayur it is uttarmerur inscription local self self government process you will come to know so how the local self representatives will be elected what are the eligibility conditions everything is uh, mentioned in that so apart from that you will also come to know about the economic history of the kingdom or during the period uh, where to that the inscription belong religious history history will also be known several religious practices you will come to know so this is about the um, 
brief uh, introduction about the inscriptions what are the utility what is the utility of the inscriptions so brief uh, with the example that we are going to study inscriptions you can substantiate all these points right you can give one one or two uh, one one so where the examples are more you can quote also quote two examples so this will also become a mains answer so best example so ashokan edicts uh they are not uh, i mean they are inscriptions but they are not precious things so however they are inscriptions so you can see this is ashokan pillar so we have studied about the ashokan pillar a capital will be there so beautiful uh, these pillars have been polished to glass and here in the empty place the inscription of the ashoka will be there so here you can uh, see the brahmi script uh, inscriptions are issued by ashoka in the brahmi script so this is the ashokan inscription or you can also call it as edi right so they provide insights into his conversion to buddhism buddhism his principles about dhamma and his emphasis on non violence all these things will be come to known next important inscription is hathi gumpha inscription so remember the date uh, they are ashokan edicts majorly have been issued during the 3rd century bc hathi gumpha inscription it is issued during the second century bc it is hathi gumpha is also one of the uh, foremost uh, inscriptions that have been issued so this inscription carved on a hill near udayagiri in odisha right so it uh, commemorates the achievements of king kharavela uh, who was ruling the kalinga empire so hathi gumpha inscription uh, it is uh, inscribed on a in front of a cave entrance of a cave right so it uh, mentions the uh, achievements or conquests of king karavela administrative reforms and also his patronage towards the jainism right so this inscription is uh, that hathi gumpha inscription next is allahabad pillar inscription very very important uh, inscription it uh, it has been commissioned or issued by uh the <coughs> <coughs> i'm unable to recollect the king's name uh this inscription commissioned by samudra gupta right so this mentions about uh his military victories administrative policies and also patronage of art and art literature so here uh, in this uh, particular inscription itself the conquest or methods of conquest conquest con conquest of samudra gupta have been e explained elaborately in detail his conquest and once he conquered what are the what are, what are the method he uh, adopted towards that particular kingdom you know uh, he followed a specific method for nearby kingdoms he immediately outrightly annexed with the gupta gupta empire for distant he conquered them but he uh, i mean he made them subservient to him paying annual taxes etc annual uh, homage etc and uh, distant kingdom kingdoms he has conquered them but he reinstated the kings and uh, in that way he cultivated friendly relations with them so there are kind of five to six strategies adopted by him so all these strategies have been mentioned in this allahabad pillar inscription so this is the allahabad pillar inscription of samudra gupta because of this inscription only we call the samudra gupta as the napoleon of the east so because of his conquest we have come to know about the samudra gupta's conquest because of this inscription only next is i hold iron uh, iron pillar inscription it is issued in 7th century ad so this also belongs to guptan period only so this uh, inscription uh, sorry it is <coughs> it is not the guptan so i am sorry so it is there at a place called i hold it is uh, commissioned during the period of rashtrakutas right rashtrakutas so it is commissioned by court poet of ragukirti uh, commemorates the achievements of king pulakesin ii uh, of the chalukya dynasty sorry not rashtrakuta it is the it is of chalukyan dynasty right so it mentions his conquests including his victory over harshavardhana of kanauj so here you will find the uh, hathi gumpha uh, sorry i hold inscription <coughs> next is mehrali iron pillar inscription so this is also issued actual 
iron pillar has been constructed during the period of guptans right <coughs> right however the inscription the writing on the pillar it is done by the sultan sultans of delhi so uh, the construction of uh, the inscription that is made by the sultans of delhi it mentions the construction of a reservoir by rao uh, boja bojla uh, at nearby place so that is written in the on the mehrauni mehrauli iron pillar inscription next is junagadh inscription of rudradaman one this is also one of the important uh, inscriptions so it is issued during the first century ad so it is found in gujarat records the repairs made to sudarshana lake by western kshatrapa ruler rudradaman one so in this particular inscription he says that this uh, inscription has been construct uh, sorry this uh, lake sudarshana lake it has been constructed during the period of mauryas and i am repairing making repairs to that uh, lake now so that is the information contained in that lake right so this is the uh, mm, this inscription junagadh uh, rock uh, junagadh inscription of rudradaman next uh, badrabahu charita inscription is there it is commissioned in 4th century ad right this inscription is found at shravana belgola is written in kannada and jain prakrit right so apart from that you will also see taxila inscription it is discovered in tax taxila uh, inscription is uh, written in karosti script and uh, mentions tax official named patika right so remember karosti uh, script is used in this inscription next is nagarjuna konda inscriptions are there they have been commissioned between 2 to 2 to 2nd uh, to 3rd century bc tanjavur inscription is there right so this inscription has commissioned by chola king rajaraja one records his military victories and administrative achievements right next uh, kalsi inscription uh, inscriptions are all also there they have been commissioned by sher shah suri uh, sur dynasty right so they, uh, they these inscriptions commemorate the construction of grand trunk road section so remember grand trunk road this is the biggest achievements during the sher shah suri administration next is sogavra copper plate inscription so i was mentioning about the dana shasanas so they are written on the copper plates so this inscription it commissioned during the 3rd century ad it is found in uttar pradesh it is one of the earliest examples of brahmi script right so it mentions the mauryan emperor ashoka's donation to buddhist community right so right apart from that rudradaman has a commission another issued another inscription that is there at girnar right apart from that we have nalanda inscription it is found at the famous nalanda university uh, in bihar the inscription mentions donation by a pala dynasty king for the upkeep of the buddhist monastery apart from that we have inscriptions at kajuraho also we have inscriptions that have been issued by vijayanagara vijayanagara kings and uh, right uh, Na- nanagat inscription is there this is uh, pertaining to the shatavahana dynasty uh, naganika one of the royal family member she has issued this she has commissioned this particular inscription so it is issued around 1st century bc right so this uh, inscription commemorates the excavation of a cave by a woman named naganika right next uh, uh, apart from that aya valley inscription is there it is issued around 9th century ad batti inscription is there mangalore inscription so like that many other inscriptions are there right so uh, for inscriptions i am not going dynasty by dynasty so if you go like that we have to discuss a lot many uh, inscriptions so because of that i am uh, avoiding the discussion i am only i have only briefly mentioned the popular inscriptions with respect to indian history so from your side also you try to know more inscriptions right now we will see the numismatics part right so numismatics also apart from art and culture aspect they also help in reconstruction of the history so the study of coins is known as numismatics so uh, the how the numismatics help history is identification of rulers and the dynasties this will happen chronology of the dynasties will also be known 
trade and commerce will come to know because of the size of i mean the composition of the coins and also the amount of number of coins that we can find at a place so with that uh, we will come to know about the uh, i mean the existence of trade and commerce at that time uh, we can come to a conclusion about that if the coins are more we get the more co more coins uh, we can say that the trade and commerce was going better if we find less co lesser coins we can say the trade and commerce was not going that much better religious beliefs also will come to know about the gods and the goddess goddesses that will be imprinted on the coins so that information will be come to be known so you know very well many religious gods like hindu gods like shiva vishnu durga we can find on the coins uh, during the uh, uh, rule of delhi sultanates and uh, mughal emperor we will see the islamic uh, we can say uh, calligraphy on the coins etc we will see various aspects on in the coins apart from that art and iconography they also contribute in this uh, way also so we will come to know about the metallurgy of that time and the art and culture aspect so the minting of coins is also throws light on the capability or technological aspects with respect to art and culture right so the imagery and the designs on the coins reflect the artistic styles and iconography of that time right so some of the coins we will see uh, minted during various dynasties and the periods of uh, during the li lifetimes of various kings so first if you see the Mayra mauryan empire third century bc so there we will have the punch marked coins so a mark will be punched on the coin so whether it can be rising sun or crescent uh, moon many other coins like a uh, image of a moor etc etc moor means peacock so all i mean a symbol will be punched on the coin so in this way they are known as punch marked coins next so indo greek coins uh, indo greek kings they have minted uh, coins somewhat sophisticated coins so the first these were the first to issue coins gold coins in india their coins uh, depicted greek deities and the rulers alongside kharosthi inscri uh, script inscriptions so apart from you will see some writings on the coins also apart from the greek go greek gods will be, will be mentioned on one side on the upwards side uh, on the reverse uh, reverse or upwards side you will also find the image of the king so coin will have two sides you know very well one side is called as upwards side and the other side is called as reverse side so if you see current uh, uh, coin uh, heads and tails like that you will call so heads will be on upwards side tails will be on reverse side like that so coin will have two sides so from indo greeks uh, uh, period itself we will see the uh, i mean printing on the or minting of coins both sides right kushana empire so first century ad to third century ad so these uh, the kushana dynasty especially issued the gold coins uh, modeled after roman coins featuring emperors like kanishka one their silver coins had unique imagery like the horseman archer right so these are the kushana gold coins so see how can how uh, beautifully and diligently the coins have been minted at that time next the coins during the guptan empire 4th century ad to 6th century ad so guptan period is known for high quality gold coins featuring gupta called uh, gupta rulers holding bows and arrows inscribed with sanskrit legends so you will see a uh, lot many coins of samudra gupta hunting scene with uh, on one coin he is minted as playing veena so he, under that it is written as kaviraja so right so uh, uh, on one coin it is minted that samudra gupta is hunting a lion so like that many coins we will find during the guptan period also apart from that shatavana period also you will see lot many coins not only coins were minted in uh, silver and gold but also uh, right so you will uh, see lot of other coins they are minted in uh, other minerals other materials you will also see lot of coins that have been minted in during uh, in shatavana period one coin during the shatavana period it mentions a large ship 
right it mentions a large ship so with that we can understand that the trade he is trade was flourishing during the shatavahana period so the uh, aspects like these will also we will come to know with the uh, coin coinage when uh, with the study uh, study of the coins right so apart from that the we will see the coins during the chola time issued gold coins called varahas so coins at that time were used to be called as varahas depicting depicting boar an avatar of vishnu so you here you can see the varaha varahas or coins depi depicting boar one avatar of vishnu so mughal empire during mughal empire you will see they issued gold coins called muhars and the silver rupees widely used in trade so mughal emperors like akbar and jahangir reigned so saw a flourishing minting system so one thing uh, interesting aspect you, you should understand that during the rule of akbar the coins with hindu ga hindu gods like vishnu shiva saraswati ganesha so the many coins even sita uh, sita and rama coins with lord sita and lord rama uh, they have been minted so this shows the religious tolerance of akbar uh, at that period of time right apart from that you will also see the gold tanka that has been especially minted during the period of delhi sultanate so uh, issued a variety delhi sultanate uh, during that time they have issued a variety of uh, gold coins uh, coins in gold silver and copper so the gold tanka was the most prestigious coin during the delhi sultanate period so the coins often included inscriptions with the sultan's name and titles along with uh, quranic verses so delhi sultanate period of coins you can see in the image apart from that maratha empire also issued uh, coins in uh, rupees with marathi inscriptions and distinctive designs right so the coins minted by shivaji and particularly sought after by the collectors now right. so apart from that vijayanagara empire also you will see lot of coins with the depictions of hindu deities like krishna and ganesha right so apart from that princely states uh, after the independence they have also minted but i mean we do not need not require uh, these coins to study the history but however we should know that so after i mean during the british rule also the various princely states they have uh, minted their own coins right so apart from that i was mentioning about the satavahana dynasty coin so here you can see the boat image of the boat right so with this we will come to know about the flourishing of trade during the satavahana period so apart from that i was mentioning apart from silver and gold coins they have minted coins in other material also like lead in lead and putin so putin is an alloy of silver and copper so they were minting coins in those materials also so these coins often depict the ships suggesting the importance of maritime trade during the reign of the satavahanas right so apart from that you will also see the kind of uh, coins of <coughs> pallava dynasty they have primarily issued copper coins featuring their dynastic emblem that is nandi bull right so these are the pallava coins they have been minted between 3rd century bc uh, ad to 9th century ad so Chil cholas coins we have already seen we have some coins issued by horesala empire also between 3rd century and uh, sorry 10th and 14th century ad so here you will see the uh, horesala empire gold phanum it is known as gold phanum so issued gold phanums featuring the horesala rulers emblem a two headed bird right it is also called as horesala sala horesala sala so these coins are known for their intricate designs and the craftsmanship so this is the coin that is gold uh, gold phanum right so apart from that uh, during the colonial era during the british rule also we see many coins so uh, this is one of the image so british india also british india east india company also issued certain coins so this is the information about the inscriptions and the coins uh, the my, my idea uh, here discussing the only the important coins is that you should have some understanding about the inscriptions and the coins also so whenever there is a question comes based on this uh, inscriptions or coins you should be in a position to answer at least 
at least through the guesswork you should be in a position to answer the question so that why is uh, my intention right so uh, with this we will be uh, completing the art and culture part and with that the entire history part, part also so in 75 days in total till now we have whatever discussed we have discussed the uh, 75 topics in 75 days and we have almost covered seven subjects seven subjects right so i hope all these discussions will help you uh, in your preparation and uh, once you watch these uh, videos you will be in a better better place little bit better place to attempt the exam and hopefully clear the exam right so thank you thank you for joining the lecture uh, see you next time i'll tell then have a good time